All right, today we're back on the 82 240D, and you guys have seen me do this in a lot of videos, but we got to replace the little pieces in the door striker. Uh, there we go. That little piece right there that kind of rots and falls out. It's a plastic piece. That part is rubber here. That little plastic piece falls out, and it causes the door to not shut correctly. You got to slam them. So I got to go around and replace all these on this car, and then I'll uh, I'll come back and show you how the door shut when I'm done. And you guys have seen me do this in two or three videos, so I'm not going to record the entire process. I will show you the replacement uh, parts that go in. Here is the little replacement part that goes in. These are being remade in Thailand. It's an exact match to the factory, and they work perfect. All right, guys, I'm just going to show this once real quick. You've seen it in several other videos. When you pull out the rubber piece of the striker, there you go. See that plastic piece that just fell apart? That's the piece that needs to be replaced. Easy, very easy to replace. Uh, here's the replacement piece. You literally stick it up in there. Boom, right like that. This uh, striker only goes back in one way. There's a little like groove right here and a little protrusion right here. It's like a tongue and groove almost. And there you go. Slide it back together. And you have your piece. So we'll just go screw this back on the car and the door will now shut correctly. All right, guys, we have the striker back in here with our little, let's see if I can zoom in for you there. There you can see it right in the corner. See the little piece of uh, the new tab that's in there. Here we go. Here's how the door shuts now. See how easy it shuts? So we're going to go ahead and do that on the rest of the doors. So we got the new little uh, tab in there. They all shut absolutely perfect now. It's one of my big pet peeves when you have to slam the doors on these guys. And we'll check the front one. Beautiful. Okay, today we are going to work on this original Hirschman antenna. The antenna easily comes off with a 21 millimeter. It, it's not an exact fit, but on these earlier uh, 82 models, they have the nice metal um, antenna, uh, I guess, what would you call this? It's a grommet, or it's like a rubber grommet on 83, 84, 85. But uh, on these earlier cars, it's a nice metal attachment. You can just unscrew that. Also, uh, we, you know, we, of course, removed the interior uh, panel here. And right there there is your mounting bolt now this has obviously never been out of here it's an excellent very clean condition under here so we're going to undo this screw here and then we'll undo the top right here and slide the antenna down and disconnect everything and then go put it on the bench and see what's going on with this thing all right there we go I like these earlier cars, the like 80, 81, 82, maybe 83 has it, but you get this nice metal um, piece rather than a plastic or rather than a rubber grommet because those rubber grommets, they just deteriorate and come apart and leak. But these earlier cars have a really nice metal piece. There we go. So that piece just screws off there. See, and then that just slides right down through there. And here's the original, uh, you know, I guess beauty ring or whatever you want to call that. All right, now I just need to get the plug off, the power plug, and there we go. There we go, look how nice that is. No signs of any damage or exterior corrosion or 
water or anything. Let's we'll get this thing on the bench. All right, let's get this thing opened up and see what it looks like in here. I like these older Hirschmans because the case is easily removable on the, uh, on the later model Hirschmans. They had these uh, plastic cases. Here's one right here with these, uh, with these tabs that you have to, oh, they're just a disaster trying to remove the case. Um, so I really, I really like working on these earlier models because you just take the screws out. Um, up until, uh, I know everybody loves the 1985 model, but uh, the earlier years were actually built better. Um, they had started cutting corners by, uh, you know, 1980, uh, 1983, 84, 83 was kind of the climax. And then they started going downhill just with little stuff like antenna housing designs and stuff like that. Just cheaper. Um, so just immediately looking at this, we just restored one of these on, <laughs> on the, uh, the, the other video. This one looks fantastic in here. So... On the other uh, on the other car, remember this uh, metal or this little copper pin right here was. Let me get that centered there. That little copper pin was bent and it wasn't engaging correctly. And this one actually looks fantastic. Let's see what we got going on here. Let me get out the tester. All right, guys, I've got uh, my jump box here. Basically, it's just 12 volt power. And the way you check these out, uh, you hook your negative battery terminal or your ground up to, this is connected to pin three. You connect your power to pin six. There we go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and jump her to another pin. Okay, and we can see that works. Okay, so this antenna is actually working fine. So what I want to do, it, it could be a fuse in the car. We're going to go check that out. But I always take these apart anyway, because you definitely want to clean these. You can see uh, right here we have a lot of uh, buildup dirt and debris down in here. And also, you want to grease this, uh, this worm gear right in here. But this antenna is working good, so we're just going to go ahead and service it. And then we'll grease the, uh, or lubricate the antenna mast. And then we'll hook this back up to the car, and we'll check. It could be there's a cable missing from the back of the radio that's not plugged into the back of the radio. Or it could be there, there's a fuse. Um, I heard clicking when I pressed the switch in the car, so we're just going to have to troubleshoot that. So in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and clean this, and I'll start by just spraying some Deox all in here. All right, let's just get this up here. We'll just clean this out real good, flush everything out down here. I know you guys can't see this. I'm off camera. All right, we've got that cleaned out real nice. Got all that junk and debris out of there, and I brushed it out. That looks really, really clean in there. Really, really nice. So now let's just go ahead and lubricate our worm gear. Easy enough. And I want to grease this little, put a little dab of grease on that pulley there. It doesn't take much, guys. I'm just going to do a little bitty squirt right there. There you go. That's all. All right. Now I want to hook this back up. And we want to lubricate the mast. And the best thing to do that with is some like three-in-one or some sewing machine 
oil and it takes just a very, very light coat. And connect this one here. And get that to run all the way out. And then remove our power. And let me grease that up. So to lubricate, this stuff, this is some old school three-in-one, and you just put a, a couple of dabs. I mean, just at the creases, you don't do much. Uh, and then you rub it in. Just rub it in with your finger. Because this antenna is in great shape. All right, then we're just going to retract that. There we go, and that's going to retract it. All right, now we just want to run it out again. So we'll do a jumper to those pins. And, oh yeah, nice and lubricated. This is moving very smoothly. And now we'll just run it back down again. All right, cool. Now we need to put this in the car and see where the issue is. I bet it's on the back of the radio, I don't know. But we're gonna go try that out now. Guys, these old cars are amazing. So basically I took the antenna out, hooked it up to power, uh, let it repark itself on the workbench, and then lubricated everything, and then put it back in the car. And the issue was that the antenna had somehow become unparked and, and lost it was no longer synchronized with the electrical system. Uh, I don't know how to explain that any better, but as soon as I plugged it back in and gave it power, I heard it park itself. So now I'm just gonna turn on the, uh, turn on the radio and watch what happens. Boom, we have a perfect working antenna. It was just not parked. Um, and if I, and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to also do the controls for manually uh, lowering the antenna um, using the switch on the dash. There we go. I just told it to adjust halfway. So we'll go back up again. All right, I just told it to go up like a few inches. So we have full manual control. Uh, we have full extension. Now I'm going to turn off the radio and we should hear the antenna park itself correctly this time. Bam, and it parks. Now if we turn the radio back on. Perfect. So this antenna is now working perfectly. It just needed, it needed to come out, go on the bench and have me tinker with it for a minute. But uh, everything is now lubricated. The mast is fully lubricated and this thing is working outstanding. All right, so now I'm just gonna put the nice Hirschman uh, antenna cover back on here or whatever the locking mechanism, whatever you wanna call it. Got my dirty fingerprints around here, but there you go. Look how nice that looks. There's no chips or pitting on here. Extremely nice condition. Okay, we're on the home stretch, you guys. We'll put a nice, uh, add an extra dash cover because that dash is, you know, it's perfect. So I didn't want, uh, I didn't want to risk sunlight or anything hitting it. Um, it's probably unnecessary. But next thing I want to check is the uh, sunroof. So let's go ahead and fire up the car. All right, and let's check this sunroof. Okay, it's struggling. So I'm gonna have to investigate.
me see if I can help it along here. Okay, guys, that's all I did. Uh, I, I put the camera down and I manually pushed back while I hit the switch on the dash and it, it went back no problem. So I'm gonna go up here and we're gonna clean. Let's turn this off. We're going to clean. Let me see. I'm sure there is no more grease on there. Yeah, that's sticky as hell and bone dry. But all the parts is very, very clean. There's no rust. Let's go look over on this side. But really, that just needs to be cleaned and lubricated, and that sunroof will uh, slide no problem. Let's see what we got over here. Yeah, down here in the track, that's sticky from old grease. So we definitely need to lubricate that. Super clean in here, and the seals are in fantastic condition. So that's good. Um, so we're going to go ahead and clean this up and re-lubricate the sunroof. Special tub of the uh, Mercedes grease. Our special little cap full of it is so damn expensive. So let's go ahead and get that cleaned up and then re-grease it. It's kind of hard to show you how I clean the sunroof, but the first thing I do is I get my bristle brush and I put some brake cleaner on it. And you really can't see because my camera stand does not go that high. But I get in here in the tracks and I clean out the old grease. Very important to get that old nasty gummed up grease out of there because you want to put in nice, fresh, new grease. See how shiny that is now? And what I was doing, I was getting down in the track there. You can see I've cleaned that old grease out of the track and I've cleaned along here. Look, the felts are in outstanding condition up here. So is the gasket. That gasket is amazing. This car was obviously parked in the garage. Um, all right, also, I want to clean that area right there. Now, nothing runs there. That's just kind of dirt and, you know, just debris. But I want to get that dust and stuff out of there so it doesn't get back in the track that I've just cleaned when I put new grease in there. So we'll go ahead and do that now. All right, again, it's kind of going to be hard to see, but now see how clean it is in here now? Oops, I missed a little spot right there. I want to get that spot out. There we go. But see how clean that is? And see how clean the track is down in there now? And also this track over here. And now, and then I've got this uh, uh, cleaned up here. So now we're going to re-lubricate that. I'm just going to do it with a little brush. And we'll stick a brush in. It's just a very, a very thin film that goes in this track down here. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and re-lubricate that. And then we're going to repeat on the other side. Okay, I've got everything clean. And you can see there is a very... So I've got my brush with the Mercedes sunroof grease. And... There is a very thin coat, uh, not back there, not that little dirty area back there, nothing touches that, but right down in this track here, there's a very thin coat. And I like to put just a little coat on the sliders here. And there's a very, very thin coat. We're going to put a little thin coat right here where the interior piece slides on. Just a little. It is so, it is, it is, it doesn't take much. You just want to barely give it some lubrication. But that track in there, there we go. You can see that track is where you brush a thin coat in. It's really hard to record doing this, guys. 
But anyway, we've got both sides cleaned up. You can see how clean that is now. And we got it re-lubricated. So we're going to go ahead and open and close the sunroof a few times to let that grease work itself in. And that sunroof should be working no problem. All right, I just fired up the car and I'm done lubricating the sunroof. And look how awesome it works now. It's amazing. All you have to do is clean and lubricate it. And, and it, uh, and it works perfect. These cars are great. They're great. Just a little cleaning and lubrication fixes these things right up. Okay, what we're doing next, you can see we have the first aid kit removed and we're going to clean the fuel sending unit. This is right here. You just undo. This is the fuel sender. It sends your fuel level to the gauge up front. And it's very easy. You just put that there. And we have this little device. It's a giant socket. It's been modified. There you go. Stick that on top of it. Now, you want to be really careful not to bang into your back windshield when you... uh when you're doing this. So I'm not going to record. I'm going to go ahead and just unscrew this and pull it out of there. But you don't want to like hit that windshield and break it. That would be a bad day. All right. When you're pulling this thing out of here, you want to have a little pan to catch some diesel because there'll be some diesel that comes out of the bottom of it. But you just pull it up here and you quickly Lay it in the pan. There we go. Now we're going to take this over here to the workbench. All right, guys. This is a special tool. It's just a flat head with a notch cut in it. And you need that in order to remove the nut down here. It fits in the little notches. And there's a nut that unscrews. We're going to see how dirty this is. But the good thing is, like I said, you clean these and they're good for another 30 years. But if you don't clean them, uh, your fuel gauge will stop working correctly. All right. And there's our little nut right there. And then we're just going to take off the end piece here. And we're going to slide there we go okay now there we go so you see the uh, gummy build up right there on the uh, here let me get closer on the shaft so I'm guessing this was never reading higher than like three-quarter tank because you can see it works well there but then it stops when it hits this gummy buildup area. So this was probably always reading like half tank or three quarter tank. It probably never read full. Um, now what you have to be careful about, I don't know if you can even see this on the camera. You see there are, there's one, two, three, like they're as thick as a hair almost, little uh, copper wires. Those two actually look like those are uh, metal or steel and that one looks copper those could be aluminum I don't know I doubt they're aluminum but uh, you want to be careful how you do this because you do not want to break those those are what send the signal uh, this reads resistance uh, in ohms and sends it up to your gauge and reads how full your tank is so we're going to go ahead and clean that off there so I'm going to turn this over right like that and I'm just going to see yeah, there we go. That stuff scrapes right off of there. So we'll be very careful. You don't want to slip. See that gummy that build up from the diesel? And I'm going to go 
That's the gummy junk that'll build up on these and clog them up. All right, I actually got some uh, 320 grit sandpaper. I'm just gonna ever so carefully There we go. There we go. See, it's like a combination of rust and grime and gummy, just diesel gunk. But it comes off. You just got to take your time and don't break these wires. All right, let's clean this off with some brake cleaner. There we go. We'll clean up in there. Clean down here. Let's look inside there. Let's shoot it inside there. There we go. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, you can see. See how shiny it is in there now? It's super clean. Let's see how our bobber operates now. Boom. See how smooth that bobber travels now? That's how you want it. That will read correctly now in the car. If you notice, there's a little notch right there. So that little notch... Lines up with the corresponding notch. I don't know if you guys can see it. Right there where my thumb is. There's a little notch there. That's how you reassemble it. So. Careful. All right. I think I got it in the notch. Yeah, there we go. It's in the notch. There we go. So once you got that in the notch, then you can put your cap back on. Like that. There we go. We put our plate back on. There we go. And now we put our weird little Mercedes screw back on there. And we tighten it down with our weird little tool. And there we go. Now the sending unit, you can hear it. That is perfectly restored and ready to go back in the car. All right, guys, what's important when you restore these, when you put these back in the car, you need to put a new gasket. This gasket, hopefully you can see this, this gasket goes around here and it seals uh, the top of the sending unit to the top of the fuel tank. So let's go ahead and just stick this guy back down in there. And literally you just screw it back in guys it's probably the easiest job ever to do on a 123 all right that's tight and there is a plug back here that just plugs right into the top of it and that's it now we've put our first aid kit back in the car it's under the first aid kit on the 123 all right, now we need to put back in the first aid kit. And uh, again, guys, this is really easy. I know you guys can't really see what I'm doing from over there, but the first aid kit just sits down in here. There we go. And then there's just two screws. 
There's a screw, uh, two screws in the front. Okay, there you go. Once you have your first aid kit back in there, there's a screw right there. And a screw right there. And you just put those screws back down in there and that's what hold this guy in place. Check that out. <laughs> the original first aid kit. See in the earlier years, instead of using that little plastic bag, they actually had a hard case for the first aid kit. I think that changed in maybe 83. I'm not sure. And there we go. That's just another thing I like about the uh, earlier models. And that just snaps down on there. And that job is done. Okay, guys, I'll just show you the, once you restore those, watch how fast the gauge pops up to level. Bam, there you go. And now it's, of course, when I go put a full tank of gas in there, it's going to go all the way up. Looks like we're about a, a quarter of a tank now. Okay, what I'm testing now is the vacuum locks. So I'm just going to hit the uh, driver's door. Oh, perfect. The vacuum system is very tight. Let me pull up the driver's door. Outstanding. And then we can check engine shut off. Perfect. Vacuum system is solid on this car. Anyway, guys, we did the uh, antenna, door strikers, uh, lubricated the sunroof. I can't remember what else I did in the video. Um, anyway, man, this car is really close. So stay tuned for the, uh, the final walk around and test drive video. This is a, a great 240D four-speed manual. Take care.